These cocktails can be homemade from gasoline, crankcase drainage, and saturated rags. Light the stuff with a match. Three alarms for any tank in the business. If you have one of these M1 frangible grenades equipped with an igniter, you can forget the homemade cocktail. But whichever you use, the Molotov cocktail's no party for guys in a tank. You may not always have a cocktail, but you will have a rifle. It won't rip the tracks off a tank or puncture the armor, but a rifle can make it button up. You can jab his eyes out. Blind a tank and it's practically out of business. But you don't have to gamble on hitting a target as small as a slit if you've got an anti-tank grenade. This is the most powerful weapon you carry. It makes you a walking arsenal. It weighs one and a quarter pounds, and it'll do a go-to-hell job on any light or medium tank. Doesn't look like much, does it? But don't kid yourself. The steel that came from that hole was shattered into fragments that whizzed inside the tank like a gang of hornets. You can put that kind of a hole in a tank from 75 yards. But remember, whenever you can, hold your fire. Wait till the tank is smack up on you. Now, give it to him. Hit him square where the armor is thinnest, on the rear or side. Don't let the words anti-tank throw you. Watch what it can do to an enemy machine gun packed with plenty of sandbagging. See? It doesn't have to be a tank for the anti-tank grenade to go to work. But the anti-tank grenade is not the only one you can fire off the end of your rifle. For example, you can't lob a grenade by hand at these Nazis. They're too far away. But you've got fragmentation grenades. And if you launch them with either your rifle or carbine, it's like sending your Sunday punch airmail. There are two kinds of fragmentation grenades. This one is time-fused. You fire it when you want an air burst above the ground. The other one has an impact fuse, like the anti-tank grenade. It explodes as soon as it hits hard enough ground. Both fragmentation grenades carry about 200 yards and have about the same effect. If any of those supermen are within five yards of either burst... Finished. There's another weapon in the infantry regiment. When it first came out, soldiers thought it must have been found in a pile of junk. This is far from the truth. The first time the Nazis got a peek at it, they termed it a secret weapon because they didn't know what hit them. It's called a bazooka. It has knockout written all over it. Like everything else in the army, it's got an official name, the anti-tank rocket launcher. And it'll tackle almost any kind of target. It can stop a tank all by itself. Stop it cold. A few on a railroad. And the enemy goes back to mules. A sandbag emplacement is no place for the enemy to hide. Not when he's hiding from the bazooka. I think this pillbox is heaven. The bazooka makes it hell. But the bazooka has one special dish, a light or medium tank. It'll knock a hole through the sides of a tank all day, from any range up to 200 yards. Okay, you've seen a rifle smash a vision slit. You know how the anti-tank grenade and the bazooka can plow through armor. Now let's see how the 37 millimeter anti-tank gun earns its keep. Against troop carriers and crew served weapons, it's effective to about a thousand yards with high explosive shell. 
The armor-piercing shell will do the job against tanks to about 400 yards and against half-tracks and armored cars at ranges up to 1,000 yards. On wheels, hut! It has a high rate of fire, 30 shots a minute. That means a steady stream of hot steel. And because of its flat trajectory, it's a real sharpshooter. It can hit a tank square on the button. It won't penetrate a medium tank's front armor, only dented. But just let the tank turn its side. The 37 doesn't kid against the side. Left front, pillbox. A tank isn't the only target the 37 can smash. At 800 yards, it can pierce nearly two feet of concrete. 800. Come in. Fire. Hit. The 37 cuts them down to size. In this case, the projectile penetrated 21 inches. But the 57 millimeter is an even tougher anti-tank gun. It takes over where the 37 leaves off. And at 800 yards or less, it's deadly. Like the 37, the flat trajectory gives it bullseye accuracy. It can smash a hole like this through any part of a tank, front, sides, or rear. It goes for concrete emplacements, too. Front, pillbox, 800, fire. salvage company. Some people say this is an air war. Maybe so. But don't sell short on the infantry. Even if you feel like burying your head, don't. That won't bring him down. When you're ordered to, your job is to try to get him. A plane flying low over troops has often been knocked down by small arms fire. Of course, the infantry doesn't have to rely entirely on its rifles against planes. It has four other highly effective anti-aircraft weapons. The BAR. The light machine gun. The heavy machine gun. And most vicious of all, the 50 caliber machine gun. This is the baby flying fortresses protect themselves with. The Nazis hate it, and the 50 has been known to make Jap strafers pretty shy. Don't forget, a plane's got a lot of vulnerable spots, like the engines or the pilot. So keep that lead hot. Keep it ripping into the sky. Even though you don't knock them clear out and down, you can still wound them, chase them off, make them go flapping and limping home to lay up for repairs. That's your job. Hit them with everything you've got. 
Here's the infantry regiment's largest and most powerful weapon, the 105 millimeter howitzer. It's the infantry's bulldog. It goes for targets too tough for any of its other weapons. Enemy cannon, anti-tank guns, concrete emplacements, roadblocks. Its effective range is nearly three miles, and it's light and easy to handle. Watch it against this stubborn baby. A roadblock, four feet thick. This is the result of only five shots. To blow it off the face of the earth would probably take 15. It's a real slugger in street fighting, too, when you have to run the enemy out of a building constructed of solid stuff like this. Here are the two whoppers the howitzer pounds out. Assassins, both of them the high-explosive shell for jobs like the roadblock, and the high-explosive anti-tank shell for jobs like this. He won't get very far. Not with that kind of ventilation. Soldier, maybe you're from Minnesota. Maybe you're from Mississippi, New York, or New Mexico. It doesn't matter from where. You all want peace again. And here are the peacemakers. They're tops. everything you've seen in this picture and more. But a weapon is only as good as the man behind it. So give them hell and someday you'll be marching in the streets, bringing the peace all Americans want.